Can you 3D scan your Warhammer models and print them out? Today, we're gonna to be finding out. Big thank you to Creality for sending me the Ferret Pro to test out. Now, before we get into the 3D scanning, I just wanna set some context. I've been 3D printing miniatures since March of 2022, and I'd like to think that I'm getting good at it now. You can see on the channel, there's heaps of videos documenting my 3D printing journey and just all the kind of fun and large and small projects we've tackled along the way. But I don't have much experience of 3D modeling or sculpting or ever using a 3D scanner before. And my approach for using this scanner in this video is going to be from the average hobbyist. If you were the average person using this in your home, what kind of results could you get? So we're not gonna have like fancy gizmos to like smoothly scan things or, or like fancy lighting setup or anything like that. Just good old what's on my desk. <laughs> Now, when you open the box, pretty standard, comes in a nice gray case, but then it's got all the bits and pieces that you need. It was very easy to set up. The cables, like they've all got their individual kind of thing they plug into, so it wasn't too confusing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how much else to, to say about that. Like, pretty easy to set up. There are two methods to scan. One is connecting with your phone. The other is connecting with your computer. If you connect it with your phone, you connect it to the scanner's Wi-Fi and you download the app and then through the app, that's kind of where you control everything. The advantage of the phone is that it is portable. The tripod mount even has a space dedicated for the phone to fit. So you can just hold it all in one and scan as you go. One of the things I did notice was it wasn't draining the battery too quickly, but it was a noticeable drop in the battery level and the phone was starting to heat up. So it's quite, I don't know, I don't know enough about tech stuff, but it's a little resource intense. Let's just say that. But you get the flexibility of being able to scan and not need a computer or anything like that with you. Now, if you're using a computer, you download the software from Creality's website, boot it up, follow the install instructions, and then connect your scanner. They suggest connecting it through the USB 3.0 or however that's pronounced. And I think that's primarily for better data transfer. So that's what I did. I tried both methods but I preferred using the computer. I just felt that had a bit more like computing oomph and just when it was analyzing the meshes and things like that for the scans, it just did that a little quicker. Whereas the phone, they've, they've released some more updates on the app, but the app crashed a few times and I think it's just a lot smoother on the computer. And usually like when I'm waiting for the mesh to, I don't know what it's called, render or whatever, I'm on my phone and I can't do that when I'm using my phone to scan. Once you're in like scanning mode, there are kind of two approaches that you can take. The first is you operate the scanner in your hand and move it around manually. This has the advantage of you're able to control the different angles that you get, but it might be a little bumpy and tricky for the scanner to keep track of everything specifically. The other method that it has, and it's in one of the settings, you can scan things that are on a turntable. And so you have the scanner mounted to its tripod and the item you're scanning just rotates on that turntable and it gets a kind of, I guess, a steadier capture. What I did was this hybrid approach where I'd let the object do two or three revolutions just to make sure it got enough scanning data. And then I would pick it up and slowly raise it almost not fully above it, but like maybe, I don't know, 45, 60 degrees to just kind of capture the top as it rotates. And I felt that was kind of a good mix of the steadiness, but also just kind of getting a bit more, bit more data from the top without just fully hand holding it because at the same time like it does a few passes and it's just a lot easier to leave it as it is now the scanning settings i only used the the first setting because i wasn't scanning any faces or bodies i was on the smallest objects i wasn't scanning anything big apart from my shoe always select high quality i don't know why you wouldn't and then tick if you're using a turntable or not and so i was using a turntable now once you're in the scanning mode there are some settings you can adjust whether i think it's the ir the infrared or whatever that is and then the the depth or something like that. There are two settings. I should know more about it, but basically I just left them on automatic. I didn't want to touch those things. Like I tried sometimes playing around, but I didn't fully understand that. And maybe that's the next step for me in unlocking this tool's full potential. My best one though, was scanning Witch Song miniatures. Like, I don't know what the model's called, but it's this like giant dude with an ax. And what I did was I, I scaled him down to the same size as one of the scanned Space Marines. And I think this is where this scanner really excels, taking bigger models 
because it's a lot easier to capture that detail, scaling it down to the size you want. So I can definitely see some really good uses for the tabletop miniature wargaming scene. Now I scanned some of my smaller 28 millimeter models and I didn't get the results I was expecting. So I reached out to Creality just to see if they could help me understand what was happening. They explained that the Ferret Pro is a light 3D scanner and is good for large models. However, if you want to scan small objects, you need an industrial scanner, which is a different type of 3D scanner, i.e. a laser scanner. Now this uses lasers and sensor cameras to calculate the data, collecting X, Y, Z coordinates, and it's quite complicated and I don't fully understand it. Long story short, you're not going to be able to get an industrial scanner for your hobby uses. So as we look at these results, let's keep that in mind. We scan multiple models. We scan like a orc knob from RTLW. We scanned a tank from Mr. Module Orc. And for the most part, they turned out pretty well. One of the things to make note is that if you've got faces facing down or just away from the scanner that the scanner can't reach, it's not gonna be able to guess those what those surfaces are like. And it's just gonna make them flat from, and just do it. I think it's just almost a straight line from the data points that it has. So that's just to bear in mind that if you wanna scan some models, it might not be worth having them on their bases so you can actually get underneath them. I wasn't expecting the scanner to scan in color. And so you can get color object files with like the textured bases of like your paint jobs in it. And it like, they, they do look a bit like, I don't know, PS2 graphics, but like that is, that's cool that it can actually capture color as well. I watched Emil from Squidmar, his video on, they did like a hundred iterations of scanning and printing a model. And they had this setup where the scanner would kind of arc over and get lots of different angles. And they had like a light following it. And so we didn't have that fancy setup, but I think the results weren't too bad. I even printed some of the scans and like the Space Marine, I was like, if I can get a Space Marine printed, that would be pretty cool. However, it just wasn't as clear. I was I was hoping the Space Marine is quite a small detailed model. This is just the free one I got from GW when you go in to paint your first model. I had to like cut the files in another slicing software just because it scanned the turntable as well. And that's obviously not part of the file, but it wasn't too bad. The tank I think turned out the best. That was something that I was, yeah, really surprised by. And then I printed out a Vallejo paint bottle and it. Yeah, it's got a, it was almost there. Like it's pretty, pretty close. Oh, it's actually a little bigger. Maybe one of the paintball. Anyway, if you're enjoying this content, if you're enjoying a man ramble on about stuff that he thinks he knows about, feel free to give us a like, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see me paint these munted space marines, you know, subscribe and make sure you stay tuned. Like my, my honest thought on all of this is that this is a pretty good tool. I feel like I am not skilled enough to use it to its full potential, but there are definitely lots of applications, particularly for the tabletop wargaming miniature 3D printing kind of thing. Firstly, the fact that it can scan in color, one of the things that I just don't think I would push myself to do it, but one of the cool things you could do is potentially like scan your army. That might take a while, or you might scan some units for a skirmish game, but you could scan your models and use them as like virtual models in a tabletop simulator. And so you could be playing with your models virtually on some program against other people across the world. So I think that's really cool. I think if you're into visual effects, and I don't know, programs like Blender, like having these models or scanning any object and being able to put it in like a virtual 3D space. That is something that there's a lot of potential with this device in the virtual space, but that is stuff you can do with objects. You can scan people. I just couldn't convince my wife to spend half an hour running around with a scanner trying to scan my body. For miniature and 3D printing, I think the biggest one is being able to scale down big figures and bring them down because they kind of keep their detail. And I guess the big thing is that if you want to play like epic scale, like the six millimeter scale, you could scan a lot of your models and bring them down. And that's an easy way to do it. Light 3D scanners, they're getting there. I think definitely if I spent more time optimizing the settings, the lighting, my method of scanning, I could probably improve these Space Marine results and the other models. However, I think you're still going to need to do some like post scanning processing, whether that's in a program like Blender or something like that. I think this tool is very good as a starting point. If you like scan your models, and then you edit them in Blender, you've got the right scale already and a good starting point for proportions and it's just adding in the finer detail. But I just, it's, yeah, it's quite tricky. Just multiple passes and just really trying 
the get the lighting right so that it can capture all the detail yeah at this stage i think it, like i would use it for shrinking down stuff to six millimeter or just bigger like 75 millimeter stuff to 28 millimeter i'm really excited to see where the, like this technology is heading because i feel like this is early days and it's just gonna go forward in leaps and bounds once again thank you creality for sending me the scanner to try out if you'd like to watch another hobby related video you can click over here otherwise thank you for watching and happy hobbying